With gratitude to our donors, past and present, the Catholic Foundation is pleased to serve as a broadcast sponsor of the upcoming televised Mass. A trusted giving vehicle for 65 years, the Catholic Foundation serves its donors, the Catholic community, and more. Because it's a community foundation, the Foundation knows about ongoing and emerging needs, including Catholic and non-Catholic interests locally and nationally. It's a simple concept. Donors create a fund at the Foundation. From those funds, schools are built, churches are supported, and compassion is given to the needy. Scholarships provide top quality education, and religious programs are supported. Join our donors and partner with us to assure your charitable support is most effective. Contact us when you sense it's time to give back. You're invited to be a part of our family of donors dedicated to compassionate, charitable giving, both for the present and for the future. It's what our faith is about. Together, we are the foundation. Oh, oh, oh. 
In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. My dear sisters and brothers, welcome to our Eucharistic celebration on this 24th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Let us enter into the mystery of God reconciling his people with himself. Our psalm invites us to trust in him, his rich in mercy, slow to anger. Let us entrust our hearts that he may heal them and forgive us of our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Look upon us, Lord, creator and ruler of all things, that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all our heart. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity to the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Sirach. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. The vengeful will suffer the Lord's vengeance, for he remembers their sins in detail. Forgive your neighbor's injustice. Then when you pray, your own sins will be forgiven. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect healing from the Lord? Could anyone refuse mercy to another like himself? Can he seek pardon for his own sins? If one who is but flesh cherishes wrath, who will forgive his sins? Remember your last days. Set enmity aside. Remember death and decay, and cease from sin. Think of the commandments. Hate not your neighbor. Remember the Most High's covenant, and overlook faults. The word of the Lord. Is kind of-
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, none of us lives for oneself, and no one dies for oneself. For if we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. For this is why Christ died and came to life, that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. The word of the Lord. reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy-seven times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he had the fellow servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant as I had pity on you? Then in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord.
I want to welcome all of you to St. Pius Catholic Church. My name is Father Salvador, the pastor here, and an honor to be invited to celebrate this Mass for the diocese and all of you who, uh, will, who are watching. Three weeks ago, Jesus asked the disciples, who do people say that he was? And they give him a couple of answers, and then he asked, but who do you say that I am? And Peter responded, you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the Son of the living God. And so Jesus responds, upon you, Peter, the rock, I will build my church. Then it was followed by this church that Jesus established upon the rock that they must also accept suffering. Anyone who wants to follow me, carry your cross and follow me. This church also will need to learn how to reconcile. We saw that last week, the process of how to get a brother to be reconciled, that there will be need for reconciliation in the church, in the community that Jesus has established. And Peter, again, wants you know if there is a number of times to forgive. Again, Jesus will have to remind Peter that we have a prodigal God, a God who does not keep count on his forgiveness. And so Peter thinks it's seven times, but Jesus reminds him, do not limit God's mercy. Do not limit his love. It's 77 times, which means as many times as you need. God doesn't keep count. Which reminds me of Pope Francis' famous uh, quotation in that regard. Pope Francis has told us, reminded us, God never tires of forgiving us. We are the ones that get tired of asking for forgiveness. And I think Peter has been invited then to remember this fact, that God's forgiveness has no limits, no bounds. God doesn't tire of forgiving us, my sisters and brothers. And so let's take advantage of this fact. We are the ones that get tired of asking God for forgiveness. Our first reading from the book of Sirach repeated four times the verb remember, 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 remember. Remember the most high, the most high God's covenant and forget any faults, overlook any faults. That is the invitation this Sunday to remember God's unlimited heart to forgive one another. Here then, the parable's main point is inviting us to imitate this king, establishing a new kingdom of forgiveness and mercy. Hence the king asking this servant, shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? He should have imitated him, not counted the cost. Here, key word in this parable is the debt owed to the king. Now, it's sad that our translation just says that it was a big amount. The literal translation would say that he owed 10,000 talents to the king. And as I looked at some of the commentators, they're saying that that amount would translate to over a billion dollars in today's money, which again, it's an astronomical amount that this slave will not be able to pay the king, and yet the king was able to forgive him. God's generosity has no bounds. He was able to forgive this large amount. And again, the slave should have imitated him in forgiving his fellow servant's debt of only a hundred denarii, a very, very insignificant amount. In conclusion, then, the parable is a severe warning about being 
parsimonious and deficient in forgiving generosity. We pray, when we pray the Lord's Prayer, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. We are asking God to forgive us as we forgive. Again, let us go back to this word debt that is embedded in the parable. It should send us back to Deuteronomy chapter 15, where it speaks about the forgiveness of debts every seven years. And I quote Deuteronomy 15, 1, at the end of every seven years, you must cancel debts. This is how it is to be done. Every creditor shall cancel any loan they have made to a fellow Israelite. They shall not require payment from anyone among their own people because the Lord's time for canceling debts has been proclaimed. Again, God in his wisdom established this time of canceling out debts every seven years. And that is something that we must have in mind, something that is called forth from us in this parable. Also, Leviticus 25, chapter 18, count of seven Sabbath years, seven times seven years, so that the seventh Sabbath year amounts to a period of 49 years. Then have the trumpet sounded everywhere on the tenth day of the seventh month. On the day of atonement, sound the trumpet throughout the land. Consecrate the fiftieth year and proclaim liberty throughout the land to all its inhabitants. It shall be a jubilee year for you. Here we hear God having established in his covenant to cancel out debts. And that is the reign, the kingdom of God that is being proclaimed by Jesus, establishing his kingdom where they must imitate God who forgives, whose forgiveness knows no limit. Let us then take a look into our hearts. Take a look at the first reading and the image we're given about those who refuse to follow God's commandment. Wrath and anger are hateful things, yet the sinner hugs them tight. That's a, the very image of this slave who was forgiven, yet he didn't forgive from his heart. He's holding tight this anger and hate, unable to release it, unable to forgive as he has been forgiven. Again, should you not have done the same as I did with you to forgive? The king asked the servant. And so at this time, we come and ask ourselves, as we establish this kingdom of God on earth, are we imitating this king inviting us to be like him, not to be parsimonious and deficient in forgiving generosity, but to put no limits on our love and forgiveness. Pope Francis has a favorite story, a novel, The Betrothed by Alessandro Manzoni. Uh, it has priests that are good and priests that are not so good. Uh, it has many themes about forgiveness. At the end of this novel, you have uh, Renzo, who was about to betroth Lucia, and uh, Don Rodrigo intercepts that wedding and asks Father Abundio to not wed them. And so the whole novel is going to unravel about this young couple about to have been married and being intercepted. And there's a plague in Milan. And Renzo, in chapter 34, comes looking for his beloved Lucia in this Lazaretto, this field hospital for those who are, who are affected by the plague happening in Milan. And he's looking for Lucia. He finds 
Father Christopher. And Father Christopher then begins to dialogue with Renzo, and he knows that he hates with a passion Don Rodrigo, who prevented them from getting married. And he's harbored this anger to the point of wanting to kill Don Rodrigo. And yet, Father Christopher will intervene and get Renzo to come to his senses to not hug this hate and wrath, but to just release it, to forgive. And I quote a passage from this chapter. Again, Father Christopher talking to Renzo and Renzo responding, yes, yes, said Renzo with much emotion. I feel that I have never truly pardoned him, him being Don Rodrigo. I have spoken as a brute and not as Christian. Now, by the help of God, I pardon him from the bottom of my soul. Then, Father Christopher is going to tell Renzo that Don Rodrigo is right there dying from the plague, and he brings them to him. He sees him. Behold, said the friar in a low, solemn voice, the sentiment you hold towards this man who has offended you, such will God hold towards you on the great day. Bless him and be blessed. Perhaps the Lord is disposed to grant him an hour of repentance, but he would have you pray for it. Perhaps he desires that you should pray for him with this innocent girl. Perhaps he reserves this favor for thy prayer alone, for the prayer of an afflicted and resigned heart. Perhaps the salvation of this man and thine depend at this moment upon thyself, upon thy pity, upon thy love. The salvation of Don Rodrigo depends on Renzo forgiving him from his heart, letting go of that wrath and anger, but just forgiving. A beautiful story for us to have as we look at the invitation to imitate this gracious King who forgives us our sins, who never gets tired of forgiving us, let us remember then, remember, remember God's mercy upon us, and let us forgive one another. Let us practice this virtue of forgiveness. My sisters and brothers, let us profess our Christian faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For our men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And trusting our hearts to God who is generous to us, let us remember that he listens to us and answers our prayers, and so we entrust the needs of the world, the church, and of our families.
for God's holy church. May it be a fountain of mercy and a beacon of forgiveness, illuminating the darkness of sin and calling sinners home. We pray to the Lord. For elected officials and those who hold public office, may they safeguard the rights of prisoners, offering opportunities for restorative justice and rehabilitation. We pray to the Lord. For those who have been victims of violent crimes and for their families, may they receive the necessary support to heal from trauma and the grace to forgive. We pray to the Lord. For all gathered here, formed by the word of God, may we resolve to bring God's mercy and love to the areas of our society where it is most needed. We pray to the Lord that those who are sick with the coronavirus, those who care for the sick, and those who have no one to pray for them may be comforted by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord that our deceased relatives and friends and all who have died marked with the sign of salvation may share with the Lord the joy of paradise. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Good and gracious God, you desire to bring all people to yourself that your mercy and forgiveness might redeem the world. Hear our prayers that having received the gift of your compassion, we might go forth to bring it to others. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Sobre tu altar, lo más preciado Señor, sobre tu altar, mi pan y vino de amor, sobre tu altar, mi vida entera, mi pasado te lo doy, mi presente con todo mi amor, mi futuro lo pongo en tus manos. Sobre tu altar te dejo mi corazón, sobre tu altar te dejo mi voluntad, sobre tu altar mi vida entera. Confiaré, no temeré, confiaré, me entregaré, confiaré en ti, Señor. Sagraré mi corazón a tu amor, mi Dios, mi Rey. Confiaré, no temeré, confiaré, me entregaré, confiaré en ti, Señor. Consagraré mi corazón. A tu amor, mi Dios, mi Rey. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all. We pray this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal salvation, 
And by ascending to you, O oh Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the Word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for, your, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating that reconciliation Christ has brought to us, we entreat you to sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread in his hands and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, Edward, our Bishop, Gregory's Auxiliary, and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Through him, with him, in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of this heavenly gift, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies so that its effects and not our own desires may always prevail in us. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. On behalf of Bishop Burns and all of the people in the Diocese of Dallas, I wish to offer our gratitude to the Catholic Foundation for, t for making every broadcast of these video masses possible. Catholics from throughout the North Texas and beyond have expressed their gratitude to the diocese, and again, we send ours along with theirs to the Catholic Foundation. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. Thank you.